The topic of this session is Python and Raspberry Pi based low energy electron diffraction imaging and analysis for surface science, presented by David Nicholas. David is currently a researcher in physics at National Tsinghua University. Please join me in welcoming David. Hello. Hi, I'm David Mykolas. I'm uh, going to talk today about Raspberry Pi and Python based. Uh, Low Energy Electron Diffraction Imaging and Analysis for Surface Science. First, I want to say thank you to Professor Tang at uh, Tsinghua University and the Synchrotron Laboratory in uh, Xinzhou. Also want to say thank you to uh, Dennis from the uh, Xinzhou Python Users Group uh, for help with some Raspberry Pi, and also Sosari, who will speak after me in this session for his help with Raspberry Pi. And finally, to Peter Wolf for um, helping me learn how to use this recording software. Okay, this is Professor Tang's uh, research group at the Synchrotron. Uh, first, I'll talk about some Python packages that we're going to use. Uh, here's a list of them. I'll talk about each one. Um, so for image formats, uh, the most common ones we hear about for uh, data is uh, PN uh, bitmaps, which are just direct 8-bit uh, per channel uh, images. They're very large. PNGs which are uh, lossless, losslessly compressed. Um, they're a lot smaller than the bitmaps, but they contain exactly the same uh, data. Um, JPEG, which you never want to use because it's a lossy compression and it introduces artifacts. And ultimately, we want to move to uh, raw data where we have the more than eight bits per uh, color and we can uh, get a, a more dynamic range that way. I usually load them into Python either using matplotlib, imread, or PIL, Python in Imaging Library. Okay, there's several reasons why you want to use Gaussian filters to process your uh, images. Um, you try to take images with too many pixels, more pixels than you need, because first you may need to transform, you need to uh, correct for distortions or rotate the images, other types of, of uh, transforms. You want to do that when you're oversampled, when you have many more samples or pixels than you need and only bin it down to a smaller number at the end. However, for certain functions, like uh, just looking for a centroid, uh, something like the center of gravity of a spot, you can bin it down ahead of time because that really doesn't affect the centroid as long as you first do a Gaussian filter to get rid of the high spatial frequency data before you do the binning. So uh, Gaussian filter, uh, we can do the binning by uh, first changing your array from 2D to four dimensions and then summing over two of those dimensions. And then once you do that, the, um, the, the uh, centroid or center of mass of all the three spots are, are essentially identical. Um, the other way to find a, the, the way to find a spot and also to calculate its position is something called blob detection. And both OpenCV and Scikit-Image each have several different uh, blob detection algorithms available in these libraries. <clears throat> the hard part is to reduce the number of false positives without uh, losing any of the uh, blobs that you, that you need, the ones that you're actually looking for. Okay, And to try to do that, it usually involves doing some Gaussian blurring so that you lose the very fine spatial frequencies and you just get a blobs about the right size and also masking off areas based on color or other aspects of the image so you don't get too many false positives. Okay, uh, I'll diverge for a second. The movie Dune is just coming out. I've been waiting 50 years for this movie. Um, this is an ornithopter, but in Taiwan what you have is an awful lot of uh, dragonflies and damselflies and I love to take pictures of them. So here's a just a couple of uh, pictures. These are just taken in, in uh, Shinju mostly. <clears throat> this is a really big dragonfly and another damselfly. Okay, they come in all kinds of colors. Now, the orange ones are hard, very hard to find. I've never seen one land, ever. Uh, this is the only time I've gotten close to one and it's only because they were busy doing something and so I could uh, uh, sort of walk up to them and take a picture. But these orange ones are very difficult. Usually they look like this. So here's a, a cloud of orange dragonflies uh, above my head. So I took a snapshot and then I wanted to count them. So let's use blob detection to try to find the, the uh, dragonflies. You can see there's one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. They're all over the place. 
and just just starting to uh, run it without a, uh, adjusting the parameters or anything, uh, it immediately finds all the dragonflies, but also on a real world image you find a very large number of other spots that you don't want. So this is the, the problem when you're doing blob detection on, on real world images. But it's much easier when we are doing low energy electron uh, Im Im uh, lead images. Okay, um, and the last uh, one of the last packages I'll talk about is map coordinates. We do this for conformal mapping, rotating images, interpolating images, um, correcting for lens distortions or the cameras misaligned, something like that. Okay, so uh, you build an array in, of a grid in any uh, shape that you like, and it will reinterpolate that grid. Um, on your image into a, a, a new image. Finally, uh, for peak fitting or for calibration or getting finding out where the center of the spots are, uh, SciPy has a nice minimize library, which has many different uh, uh, minimization algorithms in this. I use the Nelder Mead most of the time. You just give it a, a function that you want minimized and uh, a set of parameters that go into it, and it will adjust the parameters to find the minimum value based on some boundaries if, if you want to define them. Okay, so here's a picture of a lead system. Uh, this is a vacuum system where we do the research, a nice glass window and air, and the camera outside, and the camera looks at this screen. Uh, here's a, uh, one of our systems we took out, and I, I took a photograph of it. You can see these uh, grids to suppress secondary electrons. The screen is phosphor on the right side and glass on the left side. Here's the glass window out to the real world, and the camera's on the other side of that glass window, taking a picture of this screen that will glow green. And here's the controllers for our new system uh, that will adjust the uh, electron gun and the voltages on these grids. Here's a, uh, we'll see that guy later. Here's a, a, a sample holder ready to come down in front of the lead system. We started out with a simple industrial uh, machine vision camera, but it was very slow. You basically have to take a picture and then type in a file name, take another picture, type in a file name. We want to take hundreds and hundreds of images um, in, a, in a relatively short period of time in an automated way, uh, equally spaced in electron energy. And so hooking the camera directly to a computer that controls it and can control other things or be controlled by them uh, is, is going to be a, a big advantage of it. So here, here's what the Raspberry Pi camera looks like. Here's the lens, the Raspberry Pi itself, here's the Pi cam, standard camera mount, uh, so it's very easy to, to hold on to. Um, here's uh, open up the box, uh, and you want the best Raspberry Pi you can get. This is a Pi 4, 8 gigabytes of RAM on board, Raspberry Pi high quality camera, the lens we use, 16 millimeter, which is really a zoom lens, f1.4, which means it's large aperture, so we capture a lot of light. But you may want to do other projects, so we also got a 6 millimeter lens for a wide angle, and a really nice uh, mount to hold the Raspberry Pi and the Pi camera together. Okay, open up the box. This is what this is what we get. The the Pi camera ribbon cable plugs directly into the Raspberry Pi on board. Uh, standard camera mount for the Pi camera, and uh, this is this is important. Uh, different lenses need different distances to the sensor, so this little screw allows you to make some uh, adjustments into the sensor to lens distance. And uh, here's some detail. This is a, a, a thread converter. Here's a six millimeter spacer necessary for the telephoto lens, not for the other lens. Um, some experiments, initial experiments I did, uh, you can focus to about 20 centimeters, no closer with the 16 millimeter lens, but if you add an extra six millimeter spacer, it becomes like an extension tube and you have a macro lens. Uh, our ultra high vacuum system is wrapped in aluminum foil because we bake it regularly to maintain very high vacuum. And looking over the top of the Raspberry Pi camera, you can see the screen starting to uh, glow once we turn off the room lights. Uh, Running the Raspberry Pi as a webcam rather than a computer, we can do focusing. So you, 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 uh, over Ethernet in VNC, you can you can uh, look through the camera in real time as if it's a video camera, which it is. Here's a very first lead image taken with the Raspberry Pi, and um, yep, here's a zoom in on one of the spots uh, right here. 
And you can see the generally Gaussian with about a 20 pixel wide uh, Gaussian. That's heavily oversampled, but that's just what we want because we want to do our transforms first. And you can see the, the details of the pattern here is just the superimposed wire grids, uh, the electrons passing through the wire grids. Um, you, running blob detection, uh, looking for between 5 and 15 uh, pixel uh, standard deviation Gaussians uh, immediately found all 12 spots and no extras. They're ranked, uh, they're, they're uh, ranked in terms of uh, brightness. Okay, um, these central spots should fall in a circle and they do and we can use that circle to find the center of the image. We don't know where the center of the image is exactly, where the center of the lead image is. So we will fit a circle to those six spots that defines the center. Now, the second circle, the second group, should be uh, square root of three larger, and it's not quite, so we're going to have to correct the, the radial distortion as well. The spots are every 60 degrees, so they should be at the same angle, modulo 60, and these also except offset by 30 degrees from the first set. And we see something like that. So here's the first and second ring. Uh, this one's farther from the center than the first. These are roughly constant, but not exactly. So, uh, and we're not quite getting a, a root 3 uh, factor there. Now by uh, using minimize uh, and, and floating the center until we find that we minimize the uh, errors in that first circle fit, then we get these to snap almost exactly to equal identical angles and the radius is, is right on. Okay, very flat. However, uh, we're not quite uh, root 3 yet, so we can also minimize a uh, coefficients in a polynomial fit to the radii to calibrate uh, for uh, uh, the radial distortions. Okay, and then using map coordinates, we can define a coordinate system on each of the spots separately. So we're going to rotate all the spots so that the, the um, R and theta is the same for all, all 12 spots. So here are all the central spots. This black edge is that right there. Um, you can see Oh, it's okay. And here's the outer edge. Um, so now we have the outer edge always at the bottom. So we've done our interpolation and um, next, next we are going to look at the intensity of the spots versus the voltage and vary the voltage. So starting at 120 volts, the, the, uh, we're going to move these boxes ba basically one over the square root of energy, which is uh, equivalent to the, the wavelength of the electron. Um, that's diffracting off the atoms on the sample. And as we increase energy, we can see the what started as six equal spots, three of them get brighter, three of them get dimmer. But notice here, the two of them are a little uh, different than the third, and that's also the case here, that, there, that we have one that's not equal to the other two, and that's an alignment problem that we can uh, use the, the real-time uh, system to, to look at. As we increase the energy further, uh, now the uh, dim spots start returning, the bright spots start getting dimmer again, and these dashed lined are, are lines are the uh, 12 outer ring spots that are just uh, uh, coming on into the screen. So here's uh, a video. This is basically the frames just stitched together of uh, the, our first data. And the camera is kind of a complicated thing. It works really well. There are a lot of features, a lot of things you can control once you want to get into the depths of the camera, especially uh, I want to start downloading the uh, raw image data before it's processed from the sensor. And so there's a lot of documentation you can read. Here's a simple script for uh, running the uh, Pi camera. It's, it's, the module is called Pi Camera, and you instantiate a camera object. You can set the ISO, which is basically the brightness, let it stabilize, find its uh, proper exposure, save those values, and then you can do like under, over expose, under and over two stops here, and just loop through a series of exposures. And then you can uh, move on to a different energy and run it again. So the brightness of the image is primarily controlled by the shutter speed that you can set. Uh, and the ISO, and the ISO actually changes the gains of the digital, the digital and analog gains uh, for the ADC. And uh, an another important thing to note that when you instantiate your camera, make sure to keep the frame rate low, even if you're not using video, because that determines the slowest shutter speed that you can use. To another way to uh, take an image is through a command line. So Raspy Still is, um, comes with the Pi, and allows you to uh, take images without having to run Python. 
And also for the, the uh, focus, the webcam for focusing, we just use a shell script here. And then you connect to, uh, via VNC and um, Ethernet to a laptop and you type the following line into a browser window and then boom, you've got a, you've got a live webcam for your focusing. The next thing we want to do is to get live feedback without changing the energy. We want to see these six spots, their brightness, so that when we adjust the sample and tilt it, we can see, get these three brightnesses to uh, converge. Okay. Also, uh, we want live feedback for the spot size, and that's another thing that, that we can get off of these image because there's several adjustments on the power supply that we need to, uh, to, to optimize to get the smallest spots for the best resolution. And finally, also some peak fitting because we're going to need to extract the, the spots from separate from the, the background. Okay. And finally, uh, using the uh, general purpose interface bus to collect and control other parameters of the experiment. Okay. So we have a serial, uh, serial IO. There's also I2C and SPI. We can generate a uh, pulse width modulation so we can uh, control currents or voltages in the system from the Raspberry Pi. There's another library called SMBus that does that. And the GPIB has some dedicated pins for these things already. So thank you very much. Uh, this is my email address. Feel free to email me with questions. Thank you.